Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. This video is going to present a research study on using evolution to search for neural architectures. The idea of designing next level neural networks has come a long way from AlexNet to VGNet, ResNet, DenseNet, Inception, Wise ResNet, and then the ResNext, which is currently the state of the art on ImageNet with a little modification from Facebook to adjusting the input resolution. So ResNet added to the neural architecture the skip connection, propagating ahead uh, earlier features into later layers using the skip connection. The dense net uses the same skip connection idea, but instead of just going one layer ahead, it takes all of the previous uh, feature maps to the next layer. So you see here how H3 takes in H2, H1, and uh, the input as its input to its, uh, you know, its convolutions and its processing of the state of the neural network. The inception network uh, takes the input and then splits it apart into these different kinds of operations and then concatenates them to form a layer. So this inception block is forms like one modular block which is stacked on top of each other several times to make up the inception of the Google network. The resnext uses the same uh, resnet prop ahead but it also splits the input into these separate channels to process them you know, rather than just going straight in with the connection, so similar to Inception Network. So neural architecture search is the idea of parameterizing the space of all possible neural network architectures, you know, within reason, not all possible that can possibly exist, but about designing a pretty exhaustive search space that can find things like the ResNex Inception and the DenseNet and then, you know, make modifications that might, uh, you know, invent some new neural network. So the idea is that the NASNet search space is composed of normal cells and reduction cells. The difference is that a normal cell doesn't change the spatial resolution of the feature map, but the reduction cell halves it. So if you have a 32 by 32 feature map coming into the normal cell, 32 by 32 comes out as well. Whereas in a reduction cell, 16 by 16 would come out. So again, with all the normal cells, they all have these uh, skip connections one ahead. So, you know, normal cell, zero goes to one goes one goes to two in this way so the idea behind the nasnet search space is the normal cells are searched for as well as the reduction cells. so the neural architecture search has to design two different cells that make up you know uh, like blocks of processing in the neural network so what it does is it searches for the different operations to combine the previous states of the you know of the modular block and then construct new hidden states based on the operations and selecting certain inputs from the previous layer. Before we get into the details of how the evolution al area algorithm searches through the NASNet search space, let's quickly uh, understand the combinatorics of the NASNet search space and why this is such a tricky problem that needs uh, clever algorithms to search through. So imagine you have 0 and 1 as the input image uh, just cloned into two states. So if this is the first layer of the network, it would be the input image is 0 and the input image is 1. So they are concatenated through, this could go for like a three by three convolution, and this might go by like a separable convolution or something. And then together they form hidden state number two. So now, as you start to construct hidden state number three, there are many different uh, hidden states to add. You could either take one and zero as input, you could take one and two as input, or, you know, or zero and two. So now imagine adding a fourth hidden state once you've constructed three. Now you have all sorts of different combinatorics for how you can construct inputs to this new hidden state of the neural network. And, you know, as this explodes up to seven, because they constrain the, uh, the hidden uh, representations to five. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. So by the time you get to six, there's already uh, like five factorial different uh, inputs to select from for that, uh, that layer. And that's times also the number of operations that you're considering when applying each edge. So, you know, you could either choose a 3x3 three three convolution, a 5x5 five five convolution. There's a big space of operations to search through. So the evolutionary algorithm discussed in this paper is really interesting. What they do is they modify the evolution algorithm by having an aging component. So the way that architectures die from the population is by old age, by being in the population for too long. So the way that they survive and reproduce is by when they are sampled, if they win the like evaluation of who's the fittest in the population, they'll produce a child model with some mutation. And so that child model will now be young and it'll survive forward. So it's really interesting, this modification, because neural network architectures are really uh, sensitive to their initialization. So if you have a generational evolution process where you evaluate all the evolutionary algorithms at some iteration, 
the population member that survives might just have won the lucky initialization uh, ticket and it might not really be like the best architecture. So this idea of having the child with slight perturbations, it indicates that the architecture should train well and it's not just, uh, you know, it would be robust to the initializations. Another really interesting idea to the aging evolution algorithm, similar to population-based training, is that it's an asynchronous evolutionary algorithm. So when you have these neural network architecture search algorithms, you want to distribute the training of the network across different GPUs. So you don't want to have to wait for them all to be finished to do the evaluation and then the mutation and then the next round of doing this. You want to be able to just sample the members from the population that are already finished training. So again, this also might favor uh, computationally simple models because they'll finish their training faster and then be ready to be evaluated and, and pass on their genes to the next population before they age and die out of the sample. So this is the full algorithm. The population is initialized and the history which tracks the age of the models is set to be, uh, you know, is a set, is defined as a set. So they're all, um, they're all initialized, the models are trained and evaluated, and then you sample some models and you, you know, you, whichever one has the best fitness from the population is passed on. So then eventually you mutate the child architecture, you train it, and then add it to the population, and then the population members that have been in the population for the longest time are removed. So the search strategy is that they search on the CIFAR-10 data set, which is, contains about 50,000 images and is much smaller than uh, ImageNet. They train each model for 25 epochs, and then once they're finished, they're going to scale up the best performing models to ImageNet with these N and F parameters. The N being the repeating of the normal cell, remember the neural architecture search space is constructed of normal cell reduction cells and each normal cell is stacked on like repeated n times so normal cell normal cell normal cell if n is three and then f is the feature map count multiplier so then the hyperparameters of their evolutionary algorithm are p and s p being the population size like how many different uh model architectures they keep in the population and then s being that sampling the tournament selection where they say all right let's grab the 25 models and the best one uh will produce the child model which is mutated and added to the population. So one interesting opportunity could be to look more at this scaling up technique. The efficient net paper has this interesting technique of uh, weighting the width scaling, depth scaling, and resolution scaling. So it could be interesting if instead of just multiplying up N and F, you use some kind of more strategic technique for scaling up. So in their evol aging evolutionary algorithm, they use 450 K40 GPUs to search through 20,000 models, which takes them seven days of training. But these are the results they find. They get a uh, really high uh, top one and top five percent accuracy on ImageNet, but their model and their model is pretty large after the scaling with the N is six and F is uh, 448. So this also compares the neural architecture search technique with some of the uh, these are some of the human design architectures like ResNext, and then these are some of the uh, search algorithms like NosNet A. So another interesting thing to think about with the size of models is there's 469 million parameters in the scaled up amoeba net A. Other big images classifiers is 557 million parameters on the GPipe model. And then language models, I think, recently are getting a lot of attention. The NVIDIA Project Megatron, which came out very recently to the making of this video, has 8.3 billion parameters in the transformer. And the GPT-2 model, which was uh, you know, known as being really big, it has 1.5 billion transformer par uh, parameters in the transformer. So if you know of any uh, image classification models that have more parameters in this, please uh, leave it in the comments. So they're going to compare their evolutionary search algorithm with the reinforcement learning technique for searching through the NosNet space. So what the reinforcement learning technique does is it trains, it trains a, uh, an agent controller, which is an LSTM, to sample the architectures. Uh, that, you know, the sample the architectures and then train the architectures on the CIFAR-10 dataset. So these are the results comparing the aging evolutionary algorithm with reinforcement learning and random search. The random search method uh, performs much worse than the other two more sophisticated search techniques. So the evolutionary algorithm is able to find uh, high performing solutions much quicker than the reinforcement learning algorithm. But you do see that it, it kind of looks like it's saturating more so than the reinforcement learning technique. You might imagine over here, like, you know, over here, the reinforcement learning technique would probably saturate at a higher accuracy than evolution. But if you have limited computational resources, because I mean, both of these techniques, the way that Google Brain does it, takes an absurd amount of computational resources. But if you are limited, it looks like evolution would outperform reinforcement learning, especially with newer techniques like population-based training, which uh, don't even require restarting the models and retraining them. They do it like online. 
So again, this is another comparison of the computational complexity of the resulting models. So measured in floating point operations per second, the evolutionary search algorithm finds a much more uh, efficient algorithm than the reinforcement learning technique. And the authors attribute this to that if the uh, architecture is fast to train, it'll get back into the population quicker and it'll get sampled and it'll reproduce quicker. So the more like efficient it is, the faster it trains, the faster it can reproduce. So then they compare their uh, modification of the aging versus non-aging evolutionary technique. And you can see that uh, most of the models using the aging technique fall above the, uh, you know, above the uh, apples to apples accuracy comparison across different uh, hyperparameters. This is the population and sample size of an evolutionary algorithm. So what do you think is the future of neural architecture search Evolutionary algorithms, the NosNet search space, is it comprehensive enough? Does it, should it be accounting for other hyperparameters like learning rate, optimization parameters? Please leave your comments on the future of neural architecture search. Thanks for watching this video from Henry AI Labs on evolution and neural architecture search. Please subscribe for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos.